Hi class, my name is Muhammad Prince. This is my week four discussion post. So overview, chapter nine, I'm going to go over the inducements contributions theory. Chapter 10, I'm going to go over the structural functional theory. And chapter 11, I'm going to go over the core concepts of the general systems theory. So um, Bernard's inducements contributions theory is an important component um, an important component of Bernard's overall management theory is the theory of inducement and contribution. The inducement contribution theory is not um, very complicated. At its most basic level, it's simply a theory of motivation. The theory holds that an organizational member will make contributions in exchange for inducements. The member continues to engage in this exchange so long as the inducements received are higher than the contributions a person is asked to make. Now, all this really means is that the fact that an employee will continue to work for the organization if it is worth their while. If the pay, the benefits, the job satisfaction are greater than the perceived cost of your work provided to the organization, then you will stay and continue to contribute. This theory can be applied to my task force because there is there can be inducements for, and for contributions within the task force. When members of the task force find a lost animal or rescue a stray animal, they are rewarded with rescuing that animal. There is an inducement for their contribution to the task force. They may not always they may not always be able to reunite lost pets with their owners, but when they can, there will definitely be an inducement of rescuing the animals and helping the owner find their missing pet. So this article said that um, when the individual is considered as an organizational actor, the relevant actions must be considered within an organizational purpose, purpose being a critical detriment of cooperation. It is, it is not simply the capacity of individuals to act for their own benefit and to make choices toward that end, which drives human events. Just as importantly, it is the organization's capacity to limit the choices available to individuals that in the end channels coordinated action. So Merton's structural fun functional theory from chapter 10. So uh, Robert Merton's sing uh, biggest contribution to functionalism lies in his clarification and codification of functional analysis. Specifically, Merton strips functionalism bare of the unexamined and insupportable, insupportable assumptions of many of its practitioners. He broadens the analysis to incorporate change as well as stability. He makes critical distinctions between functions and personal motives. He develops a distinctive protocol for functional analysis to guide the, the analyst in social observations, and he engages in the functional analysis of a variety of sociocultural phenomena to demonstrate the unity of the perspective. So for chapter 11, the core concepts of general systems theory, um, an important aspects of general systems theory are concepts like those of organization, wholeness, directiveness, teleology, and differentiation that are alien to conventional physics. However, they pop up everywhere in the biological, behavioral, and social sciences and are indispensable for dealing with social groups. Thus, a basic problem posed to modern science is a general theory of organization. General systems theory is in principle capable of giving exact definitions for such concepts and in suitable cases of putting them to quantitative analysis. General systems theory is a general science of wholeness. So I just want to say thank you for viewing my video and I look forward to interacting with you guys in the comments section.